Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I'm here to help break down complex diseases so that it makes sense to you, and you can take this information and educate those around you. And today I'm tackling one of those topics that's all over the news, but I'm not just talking about the news. I'm going to try and explain to you why what is happening is happening in relation to COVID. Very important to differentiate. And I'll start off by letting you see what was in the news just recently. As you can see here, Kansas faces the largest tubercul tuberculosis outbreak in US history. This is on the 28th of January, 2025. So this is just breaking today. They've had 67 confirmed cases of TB related to the outbreak. And what I'll do here is I'll just play a short clip with regards to this um, this outbreak from the ABC News and then give you some basic insights into what really is TB and why I think that we should take this seriously. Listen to this clip from ABC News. This documented outbreak in U.S. history. The CDC says TB is one of the world's leading deadly infectious diseases spreading from person to person through the air. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the latest. Health officials in Kansas are dealing with the largest documented outbreak of tuberculosis in U.S. history. There have been two deaths along with 67 active cases. TB is one of the world's leading infectious disease killer and is spread person to person by germs that can stay in the air for hours. You do need prolonged contact with an infected individual. You know, if you um, briefly come into contact with somebody in the community, it's not very likely that you're going to contract tuberculosis. The exact reason for this specific outbreak is not yet clear. Kansas public health officials found dozens more have latent TB, meaning they are infected with the TB bacteria, but they do not have symptoms and cannot spread the infection to others. At this point, I'll stop and I'll give you some insight into what really is going on with regards to TB and why I think that it's important for us to understand these things. And, um, and as I said, this is about us trying to find strategies that will help to make sense of what's going on in terms of the pandemic. If COVID is circulating actively. Watch these slides as I try and explain to you what the connection is between TB and high circulation of COVID. So the first thing is that you have to understand what is TB. So it's mycobacterium tuberculosis. And you can see in the image here, this is just showing a, a cut section of someone. These are the lungs here. They're infected with this bacteria. And this bacteria then is very difficult for the immune system to be able to cope with. And so for many people, it can then become what we call latent. But in terms of actively spreading it, what can happen is if someone has active disease, they can then cough or sneeze. And what they will do is cough up some of the bacteria or and then someone in close proximity to them can then get that infection, which will then go to the lungs. This process doesn't occur very easily. So they, you usually have to have some degree of time contact. So it's not simply just walking on the street and someone coughs and you get it. But truthfully, in the hospital environment, if we do know someone has TB, we tend to make them mask and you mask as well. So there is an important part with regards to understanding that it is contagious but not nearly as contagious as something like um, measles or COVID or anything like that. Now, there's a sequence that occurs with regards to TB. The person who is infected, uh, this is showing a necrotic granuloma. I'll explain what this is in a minute, but they then spread the TB. It then spreads, say, to someone else, and this gets stuck in one of their macrophages. Now, there are two options. It can then become active disease or latent disease. This is where the vast majority of people are. They have been infected. And if you do any tests on them, you will find that they have evidence of infection, but the bacteria is latent. It's stuck in this granuloma. 
it's well controlled. But this granuloma can become reactivated and then you have this becoming active again, active and then spread mycobacterium to someone else. And that's the cycle that it goes through. It is a really, really difficult bacteria for any immune system to address. That's the important thing that you have to understand. Why is that? It's just a complex bacteria. It's bigger and it's usually taken up by these macrophages. And what happens is these macrophages will swallow up the bacteria with the intention of digesting and destroying them, like what it does with other bacteria. But this bacteria here has a number of mechanisms that it uses. One of them being, it normally, the body normally takes these lysosomes full of acid and they connect it with this phagosome, which has just swallowed up the bacteria. And then the acid will destroy the bacteria in there or any products in there. They actually inhibit this lysosome actually forming. And in some cases, they inhibit the way how this phagolysosome works. And in some cases, they cause them to rupture, causing a release of the bacteria. So this bacteria has then developed multiple strategies in order to prevent the immune system from addressing it. And this is why now almost... 300, 400 years with TB floating around. In the past, we didn't have antibiotics. Now we do. However, we are starting to see drug-resistant TB, where multiple antibiotics are no longer as effective at controlling it. So this is quite significant because TB is a beast of a condition. This is why I think that public health has to take it seriously. When we look at what happens in terms of infection here, I've got here latent infection. And what the body does, because it can't get rid of it, it then forms a granuloma. And a granuloma is like a collection. These are macrophages. They have T cells, eosinophils, giant cells, and lymphocytes. And they form this, this granuloma to lock it in so that the bacteria can't get out. It can't replicate and it can't get out. And this is latent infection. However, you have sometimes active infection where it continues to replicate and then it will cause a breakdown of this granuloma, which then releases the, tuber um, the TB bacteria, which can then spread to other parts of the body as well as other people. And it's this process that seems to be occurring in terms of cancers. The question would be whether or not these were people who had latent infection that were reactivated or whether or not they were exposed and got TB. Very strong possibility that this is latent infection that has become reactivated. And the reason for that is now why I'm taking you back to COVID. So just remember your basic principles. The COVID infection, if it just stays in the upper airway and can't break through your mucosal immunity, it is very similar at most just to a cold. You may have very mild symptoms. However, once the virus breaks through your mucosal immunity and gets into the systemic circulation, it can do a lot of damage, especially to the immune system. This is the bit that a lot of people underestimate about COVID. It really is a monster of a virus when it gets into the systemic circulation. And that's the bit that, in truth, this is where when we talk about unvaccinated versus vaccinated, natural immunity versus hybrid immunity, this is where natural immunity is so very important and very effective. But it doesn't mean you can't get an infection. It just means you have a lower risk. Now, this is where the connection to TB comes from. And now you have to follow the science around immunity. When it comes to how your COVID immune um, team operates, I have broken it down into a, a, almost a, an army, so to speak, where you have monocytes are the tanks, neutrophils are the infantry, and the T cells are the, um, the air force, Missiles and antibodies are your, your B cells and the navies, the natural uh, killer cells and mast cells are separate. 
When it comes to TB, your critical component are your monocytes, okay? And these monocytes are helped by especially the T cells and the natural killer cells to support them to be able to fight against what happens in terms of most infections, but also in terms of TB. Here is where it gets complicated because if you have the virus breaking through the mucosal immunity, it then does this to your immune system. It takes out the lymphocytes and it's because the virus can specifically infect these lymphocytes and therefore make them dysfunctional. So sometimes they're not necessarily gone as much as the fact that they are not operating effectively. And so therefore it's left just with the monocytes. Additionally, the virus can also infect monocytes and get them activated and dysfunctional. And then when you have this situation where in an immune system is depleted, that's the perfect situation for reactivation of TB. And so as we come back to this principle, it's very likely that a lot of people were in the control, the latent phase of the disease. But after they had COVID probably a few times, their immunity starts to break down, then they get a reactivation of the TB, which then does this cycle. And this is very, very serious because as I said, TB, whatever your immunity, is a pretty serious disease. And so we need to ensure that we identify those who are now struggling with immune failure. It's a very interesting time and it's almost inconvenient to say this, but we have flipped completely where it appears that the cohort who were apparently supposed to have been protected are now the risk. Especially because this is the largest cohort, I'm not sure if there's any easy way out of this. We just have to try and find ways to protect them, because by protecting them, we will protect everyone else. Because if they continue to circulate, not just COVID, but RSV, influenza, TB, mycoplasma, the list is growing. It puts everyone at risk. These are very challenging times, but the longer it takes us to acknowledge where we are and why we are where we are, the less chances we have of addressing these very, very serious issues. So this is not meant to make you worried, but it is certainly made to make you take things seriously. These are difficult times and we're going to need very, very innovative solutions. Have a great evening.